Hi everyone, uh, this is Frances uh, from Vegan Wines and today is our wine, Meet the Winemaker series. So before we invite Loretto in, I just wanted to say a little bit about Vegan Wines. Um, we are a online wine club and also a import and distributor. So we um, right now we're you know we're pushing our online sales because we have a chance for everyone to taste all the amazing amazing wines and that's why it's so important um, for you to meet the winemakers so without further ado I am going to um, introduce the full lady we're just waiting for her now oh hi Agripo how are you thank you for joining us hi, hi. <laughs> How are you? Great, great. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> we're very happy to have you. And um, we're going to let you take the stage and introduce yourself. Uh, okay. My name is Loreto Arteaga. Uh, my family is the owner of Nerdiwe Vineyards. Um, I'm not a winemaker. Um, actually, I studied fine arts. But then I got to wine business um, because of my family. Um, they asked me to um, take care of the um, branding part of the of the vineyard, the logo, the labels, and then I started to get into it. And then every time more into it, and now I do everything but the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I do drink it though. <laughs> yes, and you do. You're in partners with your brother as well, too. Yes, my brother uh, Bernardo. He's somewhere over there around. So um, my father had the vineyard planted like um, 15 years ago, more or less. And he made this wine, very traditional, like Bordeaux blend, um, aged in oak, very traditional, like French wine. Um, it's great, it's very nice, but me and my brother, like younger, and we asked him if we could, if we could have some of his grapes to make our own kind of wine. Uh, we thought that um, people our age wanted to drink uh, something different than what people like he and his friends like to drink. So we asked him if we could, ha we could have some grapes to do um, more uh, a wine that was, was, was more like 100% um, of the variety, very true to our, uh, our area, our terroir, which is Lolol. Uh, we, we are in Colchagua Valley, which is a very good valley. Um, and so we wanted to make wines that had little to no intervention, like the grape expressing itself, the soil expressing itself, the climate exp expressing itself. So we practically like just let the wine be. Uh, so, and that's why, for example, we use neutral oak, uh, like um, oaks, uh, um, cases, cases that have been used like four times. So you don't get the taste of the wood, you just get the taste of the wine, of the grape. Mm -hmm. I love that because you're you're holding the true character of the grape versus the oak flavors. Yes, yes, and and that's why. Uh, well, the vineyard is called Nerquiwe, but the um, the line of wine that we do is called Quiebre. I'm going to show you the label, and Quiebre in Spanish um, it means uh, it means like a break. So it's like a break from traditional, from tradition. Like the wine that my dad makes is called Justo. It, it, it's a family name, but also, it also means fair. It's a very like traditional name. And the labels is very uh, French, like the wine house and the winery, like a drawing, very traditional. And he said like, you can do whatever you want in the young wine. At first we called it the young wine because it was supposed to be young people. Um, and then we call it Quiebre because of the break. That means uh, doing this type of wine versus the other one that's very traditional. Yes, I love it. Um, and that's one of the things I really love about your wines because you do, you don't know, like your Syrah. Um, I fell in love with it because it's, you can drink it on a, on a hot day and you yeah. chill it just like I do too. <laughs> yeah, I chill, in the summer, I chill the wines all the time. You're getting to summer now. We're getting into winter. I'm getting like a, a fleece jacket. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to be jealous of you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> the summer, I keep them in the, in the fridge and then just take it out of the fridge maybe half an hour, 20 minutes before I'll drink it and serve it like a white wine. Uh, it's very fresh. You get like lower alcohol um, 
so you get more of the fruit you can have it by the pool or as an appetizer mm -hmm. like it's very fresh yes i'm actually having it now and <laughs> it's a very hot day today in new york um so but you know like what um oh i do want to ask something that's very special about your vineyard that something you have planted on your vineyard that reflects in your wine ah yeah 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 <laughs> um first of all the wine the 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 vines are, are very are very tricky because ours are planted not in, in uh, they're planted in a very steep hill so you have to do everything by hand you can get like a um a tractor you call it tractor the yes don't uh, those <laughs> so you can't get those up in the hills so you have to do everything by hand hand picking hand like harvest everything when you wrap the the the, the vines when you uh, cut them i'm not i'm not i'm, I'm not sure about the like ter technical name about the cutting pruning maybe sure. yeah yes yeah. that uh, all, all by hand like it takes a lot a lot of time because it's eight hectares so, like that like a normal uh, normal place it takes like two weeks for every job you have to do for us it takes two weeks instead of two days so it's like a lot of extra time but it's uh, we do it because the vines grow very stressed and the grape is more concentrated so it's it's got a lot more flavor yeah so it's like um it's not very good for if you want to sell your wine to get like a lot of uh kilos and it's not a good business but if you want to do if you are in the premium quality wines it's a good idea so that's what we did and then we also have very um eucalyptus trees planted that they were next to the malbec that we have and we never thought of uh moving them because they're really nice it's right by the like a, a road so they get they get they give like a nice shade it's very typical from in Chile to have eucalyptus trees, like a row of eucalyptus trees in the, in the road. Um, then we started making the Malbec, and it's 100% Malbec, no oak. And then we smell it the first year we make it, and it smells like eucalyptus. Like, this is a minty smell. Why do we have a minty smell? Is it eucalyptus? Yes, <laughs> it's like eucalyptus. And why do we have a eucalyptus? And the other ones, do it, they have it? No, they don't. It's just the Malbec. And then we figured out that there was a row of eucalyptus trees planted right next to the, the Malbec vine. And it's been showing up every year the same. And it's a very distinctive um, uh, aroma for, the, for our Malbec. Um, it's usually, it's actually not a very typical Malbec. You can, if you like, if you, some people say like, oh, I love Malbec, I love Argentinian Malbec. And I was like, and I say, um, this is nothing like it, so please, don't expect, don't drink it like you're, if you're expecting like a Malbec because you'll be, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure if disappointed, but it's not what you expect, but it's so different. And that's what put us in the map because people love it because it's very different, very unexpected, so fresh with the eucalyptus smell. It's my favorite um, wine of the, of the ones we make because of the really? uniqueness, <laughs> yeah, because of the uniqueness of it. Um, it's a fun wine. It's, yeah. it's short enough for this. <laughs> and, and, and people like, they drink it and it's like, what's that, what, what's that I'm smelling? Like, please don't tell me. <laughs> I'll let you guess. <laughs> and when I went to visit you, I saw your vineyard and I'm like, how in the world do they get up there? Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's... Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but the view is amazing of the valley. The view of the valley up there, it's so nice. You get like all of the valley green, all the plantations from the neighbors and everything is really nice view. Yes. And now, well, you, you know, your father is into winemaking. I mean, more traditional um, French yeah. style. How does he feel now about, you know, you and your brother's work now with opposite? Uh, he loves it. He's actually, he's traditional, but he's always had a, like an edgy uh, side of him. Like when mm -hmm. I was in art school, he was like, oh, um, maybe with some of your friends could do a graffiti in the in the bodega of the wines. And I was like, okay, <laughs> <that's good." laughs> like I love open it. Open to that, like uh, also in music. And so like he prefers his wine um, over over the Kiev, prefers to drink Justo. But for me, I've been drinking Kievre, this type of wines all the time. So for me, Justo is boring. Um, it's 
I like it. It's nice. But I like that the, um, these wines are very straightforward. So it's, yeah. it's, it's not, there's no bullshit. It's like, this is what, this is what I am. Um, hope you like it because um, there's nothing like, uh, there's no makeup to it. There's nothing like if it, if it has um, something happened, happened that year in the, in the climate, it will show and I won't, yeah. and don't do anything to like uh, cover it up. It just to express itself. Exactly. And, you know, the fact that you are the way you're, you and your brother um, decided to do all this for the younger generation, for, you know, for young people now don't want to save wine so much, you know, like, okay, let's keep this in the cellar for how many years? We want to drink it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, when we go to wine fairs, people ask, like, how long can I save this wine? It's like, why would you like to, like, <laughs> <laughs> tonight <laughs> please drink but, um, yeah, they're, they're, you can you can save them for a while like five maybe seven or ten years depending on the variety but uh, when we put them in the market they're ready to drink right now right, like right then you don't have to put them in the cellar like justo the, those wines you have we put them in the market like maybe at least five years after the vintage because of the way they're made they need to rest in the cases, uh, in the barrels, and then in the bottle, like two or three years, um, and then it's the, and then and they, they they reach their peak maybe ten years after they were made. So mm -hmm. it's like a very, this is a, like, I'll buy it, I drink it. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy it now, <laughs> for sure. So we have available now on on veganwines.com your Syrah and your Malbec. Yes. But we are introducing a new one, and I'm so excited. I can't wait till it gets here. So you want to tell us about a little bit about the new one coming? Oh, yes. We're getting the Quiebre Carmener. Uh, Carmener is, is a variety that was lost in the world due to phylloxera, a uh, disease in the grapes. It's originally from France, I think. And then it was wiped out. Like, it was nowhere to be seen. And then in Chile, we had this, uh, we had Merlot, and then we had this, different Merlot that has, had a different leaf and you had to harvest it uh, like at a different time. So you have to treat it a bit differently than the regular uh, Merlot, but it was like, okay, nobody really thought anything about it. And then some guy was like, this can be right. Why do we have these two Merlots like so different? And he started looking into it and looking into it and he figured out it was Carmener, the lost variety. And then it's like, and you can actually find, I think maybe 90, more than 95% of the product, world production of Carmenet comes from Chile. So it's like a very Chilean grape. Although it's not originally from Chile, the most likely if you see any Carmenet on a shelf, it will be from Chile. So it's like very, and um, people in Chile love it because it's a bit lighter. It's a, it's a bit of a lighter wine. So it mm -hmm. goes with everything. You can have it also on, only with uh, appetizers, some snacks, or by itself, like you can drink it by yourself and talking just to your friend and you never notice and oh my God, drunk <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> the bottle is gone. <laughs> yeah, it goes very and um, yeah, people love it. Uh, women love it also a lot. Mm -hmm. Not that um strong. It's also a bit sweeter. Not sweet because we don't do sweet, it's just the, it's just the it's very like uh, black um uh like berries. Blackberry yeah. or blueberry, very dark uh, of the, 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 the berries are dark, but it's also like very mm, fresh. You don't, uh, sometimes of the, in the Carmener you get um, a very jammy feeling like fruit, but jammy. Uh, yeah. And this is fresh fruit. And that's what we love about our wines because they're like always fresh fruit. Like there's always a lot of fruit. Man, uh, like fruit, 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 and it's like a bunch of fruit. Uh, <laughs> and that's what makes them very easy to drink. You can pair them with whatever you have at home, actually. It's, I think there are no wrong um, uh, pairing. It's yes. like whatever you're having, it's probably will be for, for whatever wine you have. So there's some meats, like, for example, seafood go with only with white wine. No, yeah, they go great, but sometimes you can have seafood with a red wine and it goes very well. Yeah, I remember when I went to visit you, you made a delicious, like, 
whole table of vegan food with the wines. Oh my gosh, it was so delicious. And to know that a lot of your traditional like uh, vegan dishes just pair so beautiful with these wines yeah, too. Yeah, we pair them with humitas. Uh, humitas are very similar to tamales from the from Mexico. It's just sweet corn mashed and cooked with some uh, herbs. And then you cook it uh, in the leaf of the corn. So you wrap it up. So it's, it looks very similar to a uh, tamal. And then you just open it and, and you serve it. Uh, we have it with a tomato and then tomato, onions, and some uh, basil. So it's very summer dish. And you can have it the same way, like um, cooked in a, in, a, like a, um, in a plate. And some people have it just like the mix of it. Uh, and, and others uh, use that base of the corn with um, meat, like minced beef or minced chicken, uh, but you can have it by itself also. It's called pastelera. So I, I, love, I love every variation of corn. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I do too, for sure. And you actually gave us the vegan men, uh, recipe to pair with your wine for the wine club members this month. Oh. Thank you for that. I, I'm not sure if you did actually ended up with the the lentils or the curry. The curry. Uh, okay, because um, there's this um, wine, uh, food blogger that I follow a lot. It's called The Endless Meal, and she does many vegetarian and vegan recipes. Um, she always makes them very tasty and very easy to cook. Like for me, in the quarantine, I've been getting more into cooking. I'm thinking everyone is getting more into cooking these days because now we have time. And um, yeah, the Malbec, because of the like minty and the eucalyptus smell, it's very fresh. I usually pair it with Indian or Thai food, especially with coconut uh, milk or coconut cream because it cuts like the fatness, the richness of the coconut milk and the curry and maybe Kaju nuts um, and stuff like that are very typical from that, so it goes very well with that. Okay, and it's I'm sure they're gonna love it. And I love it. We, <laughs> we actually also have a um, El Grifo is a restaurant in Puerto Rico that's 100% vegan, okay. and it's gonna be posting on Monday their recipe on our blog post. That's gonna it's pairing with your Syrah. So oh, I'm pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. a, vegan, a vegan recipe, like uh, like a vegan version of a traditional Puerto Rican dish? Yes. yes. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that. So with that said, can you um, tell us a little bit about your Syrah, you know, how and your, um, so the Syrah and the Malbec. Um, uh -huh. Your taste when you taste it, you know, besides the eucalyptus. Yes, and also um, later, like in the in the um, later harvest, we've been getting more of a hint of eucalyptus in some other wines. So, so now you can find in some of the um, latest harvests of the Syrah. Sometimes you can get like a hint of eucalyptus too. But the Syrah for me, it's um, it's always been a very um, when I was like younger, I always had that Syrah, it, was very, it had to go only with uh, lamb, uh, very greasy uh, meat because it's very strong. So you need to cut the fat of the meal. And I was like, why? Because they're always very heavy, very structured. Um, and our Syrah, we try to go like the lightest way possible without losing the structure and, the, and all the like um, fruit of, of so it's a bit of a more, um, it's more of a, it's a very easy to drink sira. So you, you don't have to necessarily pair it with, with food. Um, you love it and you don't even need, uh, you don't need meat. So you don't yeah. need meat to enjoy a sira. So there are so many myths about the pairings of the food that you have to just like go with it and like jump in the pool and say like, I'm going to have this with whatever I'm having to end at dinner. I will be great. Yes, it's more the mood thing, your mood kind of deal in the, the wine. But yeah, your Syrah, you can definitely drink it by itself. Yeah. For sure. All That's the Kievre wines are meant to be uh, drunk by itself or like not, not necessarily have to pair it with a big uh, meal. Uh, exactly. Some people like, uh, you have to reserve wine for a big meal, not maybe for the snacks or uh, 
or, or, or like by itself. That, our wines, you can do whatever you want. You can have them by themselves. They're very easy to drink. That's what we want. To like, mm -hmm. people like, can drink wine, try the varieties. Yeah, and also um, your wines, this one is, your, your Syrah, I'm trying to look, sorry. Um, it's like 12%, it's very low in alcohol too, right? The percentage. I think, no, I think it must be 13. 13. 13. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. But sometimes people think with big wines, it's also the percentage, the alcohol is big. And this one is still very yeah, slow, so, 13. So we usually get, um, we try to go to, we, every year we try to lower our like alcohol because we want it to be uh, easy to drink. So mm -hmm. when you drink too much alcohol, it's, it, it's uh, more, uh, more difficult. But um, also, but we, uh, it's, it's hard to keep the balance to uh, lower the alcohol, but keep the, keep the, like the redness of the fruit. So, but the, the 2017 Syrah, that's also like coming, uh, coming soon, the new vintage. That one, we co-fermented the, the Syrah, Pit of Yonier, that's a white wine. That's the way the Syrah is done in Australia. And my father planted um, almost a hectare of Yonier just to do that. And this is the first year we were able to do it, uh, the, the 2017 vintage. So it's like 5% Yonier, um, I think 90% uh, or 5% Syrah, and the rest of it is a bit of Petit Verdot. So you get, you get more of like, um, like uh, the Syrahs, like coastal uh, Syrahs, the ones you get like from the, because we get here, um, we're a very, like, we're Central Valley, but we get coastal influence. We're 40 kilometers from the sea, like straight line. And we get a, a sea breeze in the evenings that cools everything down. So we're not a typical Central Valley region that gets very hot evenings. We get cold evenings. So we get very hot in the midday. And then in the evenings, you have to wear a fleece even in the summer because it gets cold outside. And, that's, and that works great for the grape. And it's like... Yeah, yeah, so it cools down everything, and then we've, we've been able to go for a more coastal style of Syrah that's lighter mm -hmm. and easier to drink. That's wonderful. And, um, you know, you don't do anything to your vineyards. You know, you pretty much let nature take its course. And, yes. And she behaves well next, you know, because you're, you're not, you're letting her be. So you work alongside nature, and that's why you have beautiful wines. Yes, yes, we work when in the like we work the plants, the vines, and then the grapes. We just when we harvest them, um, just how they come. Like <laughs> we pick the best wines that the best grapes um, from the best areas. Um, but apart from that, uh, that's it. We do little to nothing. To we just uh, keep an eye on it so it doesn't like go somewhere. <laughs> so it doesn't like the acidity or the or the alcohol goes somewhere, but we just mainly it's mm -hmm. very low uh, uh, intervention in the wine. So how was the harvest this year with everything going on? I mean, you, it's a family vineyard, so you were there, but you had to have other people help as well, correct? Yes, we have like a big crew to help us because uh, like I said earlier, um, since the eight hectares were in so steep hills, it, everything takes, 10 times longer than if they were like in a um, flat um, vineyard. So um, we had, we had, we have, we've been like, we decided like, for example, the first one that was ready was the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So that was the first one we harvested. So everyone focused like to get the Cabernet. And then a couple of days later, we followed with the Syrah. And then we said, usually ended with the Carmenet. And also the Petit Verdot this time for us. But it was a very long harvest. It took us like different days uh, because they were not ready at the same time. It was a very hot summer. Um, but, but strangely, it, like all the, all the fruit was like um, ripe, like, uh, lo uh, like not at the beginning of the, of the year. That you want, like, and usually you begin to harvest by March. And then we mm -hmm. put our just finished now to harvest it's been like very wow. long yeah that is long from that it was a very good um 
there was like um uh, how do you call when they, they when they freeze um the frost yeah we had a frost uh like maybe in september i think uh, many vineyards in the area lost a lot of production but since we are in a hill we don't get that we don't um they we don't freeze so awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure so you think yeah. it's a good harvest this year huh yes it's a good harvest yeah i'm, I'm i have high hopes for the 2002 <laughs> that's awesome so um what is the hardest thing i mean you you're you, this is your and your brother's come you know business and but it's a family business of course for your father started and you're not the winemaker but you see everything going on you're part of the harvest and but what is the hardest thing for you in the wine business that you've seen um like for me it's mm -hmm. uh, because it's just because that uh, since i didn't study like uh um wine making as like i have to learn like other stuff so i don't uh, like that that's a, like a hard area for me but uh, like in the business being small is very hard in in chile because we have very good wines that are very uh low priced uh, because we have very good vineyards and um so when when we do our wines that are very small productions um very high quality grapes and you have to charge double than like the the wine you get in the supermarket people are like why should i buy your wine um i can buy a different wine for for half what you're selling it's like yes but ours has personality uh passion we're we're very um passionate about what, what we believe we work with local people uh fair trade uh like wages and everything so um also everything buying everything when you're a small producer it's everything the unit is more expensive when you buy than when you buy now like eight million bottles and i buy only <laughs> like my whole production this year was 17 uh, 7, bottles so mm -hmm. it's a very a small but yes it's, and everything so everything mm -hmm. is a bit more expensive like the each label is a bit more expensive like and and then everything adds up and and of course the grapes are very um they're very they're expensive to produce in the in the steep hills because everything takes 10 times longer so mm -hmm. but we do it because the quality is there and we believe that people should uh, try get to know why this um so that's what i think that's the hardest because we since we're small we don't have like the budgets of big market uh, for big marketing campaigns uh we don't have a marketing department it's like Oh, can we do marketing something? So let me ask the marketing department, Loli. Can we make this? <laughs> like we are everything. So, um, uh, so that's like the hard part, but, um, but it's also um, the best part because since we're small, the owners and we're involved in every part of the process. And when we meet someone or we sell their, we sell our wines, we, we can meet face to face with the, with the, with the like the consumer and when you and when they buy wine um they love it and they tell you that they love it i can look at them in the in the face when like in their face when they're saying that and i think in the big companies the owner never gets that uh, he, he never gets a chance to like really talk to like everyday people like the people that love their wine they 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 can't do that it's very difficult and for us day to day and that's what we love we love think uh, we love sharing our wine and we believe that um that for like a consumer that's like a bonus to getting to know the winemaker or the owner that's a privilege um that you don't always get you can ask all the questions that you want and you'll be able to answer it because we made it we know why we made it we know we know where it was planted instead of maybe like i don't know sometimes in the wine fairs or the wine event you pay some good looking girl and some good looking guy to show your wines <laughs> and they probably don't know anything except that it's white or red or the variety so because that's what they so if you want to know a bit more they won't be able to answer you um, yeah. that's, i think it's uh, great for the like small producers um that's like um uh, a thing we love about it because we're able to share the passion with the mm -hmm. consumer with the with, with the, all the other wine lovers <laughs>
No, it's true. It's one of the things I really admire about the whole group, you know, because you're a special group for vegan wines. It, the Chilean group is amazing. I mean, you all, one of the things that I really admire about the group is that you're, you're trying to make your own mark. So you're trying to express your grapes, your way, and they taste phenomenal. I mean, they're amazing. <laughs> and everyone has their own personality and we don't compete yeah. with each other. Um, mm -hmm. We're friends and we know that if one of us is doing great, it's great for all of us because it just goes that if one of the wines is like a, a big hit, um, he'll be talking about Movi, the movement of independent winemakers from Chile, or small producers so he's like carrying the flag for all of us so <laughs> we all rise with them so we're always like supporting each other um liking their posts and i don't know if andy for example from mujer andina um their, their sparkling is amazing and i'm always mm -hmm. buying her sparkling i don't buy it at the supermarket i buy my friends wines and i take them to my other friends that are, that are not in the wine business dinners And I tell them all about my friends, like Jose from Tingario, uh, Jaime from Om. I, I buy from them and I always upload it to social media. Like we try to, and we do it and everyone does it with the others. So it's a really great group and it's a very good support system for like uh, small producers. Yeah, it's, I'm very glad that Jose introduced me to all of you. Believe yeah. me, that trip was amazing. And because of it, we have a great Chilean portfolio on veganwines.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, is there anything that you would like to share with the audience about your wines? Oh, maybe. Well, it's not about the wines, but it's uh, about some of the, um, also the other uh, members, uh, or like the Chilean group, what mm -hmm. I said about Moby. Yes. Um, the movement independent vintners from Chile. We are 34 members, uh, all very, um, all uh, different sizes of products. Some vineyards are bigger than ours, some are uh, even smaller, some export, some don't export because they make 2,000 bottles a year and that's it and they sell it here. We have like every, whatever style you can imagine, we have it and that's the diversity we have in Chile. And we're always helping each other, all the association, Associate, uh, uh, how, I think association, right? Like helping yeah, yeah, okay. work together because together we are more. So Andy always said, like together somos más. She mess, she mixed it in Spanish and English, and that's uh, like all of us working together makes it, makes the group uh, stronger. And then we all have a better chance to get our message out in the world. That uh, and we want people to us to think that uh, Chilean quality wines uh, come from Moby because they are outstanding and passionate and all with their own personalities. And you have a very great, um, you have a lot of uh, Moby members in your mm -hmm. portfolio. And it's, um, it's like a quality seal in Chile to be a part of Moby. And it also means like you're like, you're someone that believes in, in like you have beliefs that you believe in, 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 in the passion of wine and, and like, Like a dreamer, like a dreamer, but that goes for it and makes uh, and gets things done. So it's it's a really cool, uh, cool. Moment. Yeah, no, it is. It's one. So part of uh, our um, to you know searching for wines that are without animal products is also the winemakers. We really need to know that you are you love what you do. That this is your passion. And that's one of the things that I hope that the audience sees right now coming from you, how much passion you have for, for winemaking. It's not just, of course, we all want, we need to make money, but you love what you do. And that's very important. Yes. Yes. That's, uh, we're very proud of what we're doing. It's, it's not easy, but I think we're making, uh, we're taking small steps in, in, in a very good direction um, to make, Chilean wine um, more known, not, not just because it's like uh, good, uh, very low, uh, at a low price point. Uh, we're working towards like, you can get high quality premium wines from Chile with a lot of personalities and compete hand, like, compete hand in hand with 
France, uh, Spain, Italy. Like, I try my wines and I think in that price point, our wines are much better. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that power there. <laughs> yeah, and we think we're, our wines are great and they deserve to be there in the top, in the top uh, shelf. Um, they're great. They're amazing. They're different maybe from what you've tried some other times, but that just, you just need to like, go out of your like um comfort zone and try new varieties and try to new and try mm -hmm. new wine making styles uh, varieties that you never heard before maybe um sometimes you try a couple of wines from one variety and you, that you didn't like and then you say no no i don't like that variety no please keep looking for uh keep in other um wines of that variety because there's so many and they're all so different and mm -hmm. guarantee that you love some of the wines, uh, even if you the first ones you didn't love, you you didn't like, you will like some others because like, I can have a Carmenere mine and then go from other like maybe 20 kilometers away and they'll be completely different. Sometimes you yeah. might think different varieties, they're so different. So you just have to try and try and try and drink drink and drink <laughs> <laughs> yes it's, it's like uh, we have we're working with six of the winemakers in Chile and you all have different um the quality the 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 taste the, everything about it is different so I love that because even just with this group I'm able to we're able to make a portfolio of Chilean wines that could satisfy almost any palate out there and just within that group yes you have something for everyone yes um because our geography is so um uh, we have such a variety we have like high mountains we have sea we have um valleys we have very uh, like almost tropical climate in the north and then very like uh, very cold um weathers in the south so you get everything so you can get like whatever you can imagine you can get in in chile so it's it's really interesting what's happening here everyone there that's a lot of small producers trying new things trying new varieties maybe uh, trying different ways of wine making so it's very exciting it is and one of the things that i really enjoyed also and i was very grateful for when i went to visit uh, Chile is that you're you're taking a lot of the old vineyards and bringing them back to life the forgotten yeah. vineyards and the wines that come out of there is amazing so yeah. um, right for some for a long time uh, we had uh, th those uh, vines were like demoted like there's like that's not good enough we just have to do these very traditional uh, French varieties that those are the ones that sell um, and for example Pais uh was very people paid like no money for that like it was like most some people like ripped the vines from the soil because this is, is terrible <laughs> and then some years ago people started, people started uh, they said this one is amazing just let me try and do it for example jose um has the cartesiano uh, that is from país and i love it it's <laughs> so <laughs> Um, very fruity and probably like a big company wouldn't uh, five years ago would never would have never made a país wine because it was like out of the question here so uh, the small producers are taking risks and and innovating in the wine in the wine world in Chile so so yeah exactly yeah in the in the vegan wines portfolio no, we're very grateful to have been so fortunate to be able to meet all of you and, and work with you and partner with you because you are doing what the future of winemaking is going towards. You guys are the future <laughs> and with some amazing wines. So, and, um, you know, I have to turn on my light real quick because it's getting dark here. <laughs> So sorry about that. <laughs> um, forgot to do that beforehand. Um, but, you know, um, thank you, Loli. And um, your name is Loretto, but we like calling you Loli. So well, thank I'll you. Loli. I'll say, if I'm on the street, I'll just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> and we were supposed to be now in Chile. Well, coming back home from Chile. 
And then you guys were supposed to be coming in October with Pro Chile and Moby. So yeah. Yeah. a lot of things yeah. have changed. The quarantine, the, all this COVID has been stressful for everyone, but yeah, no more trips. And so all, all, also all those funds are going to help people having the disease. So now we're, we're figuring things out, but still, we're, we're, still, we're probably, when, when we're able to travel, we just go visit you to New York and show our wines because we love showing our wines we love meeting new people and showing them what all of the new chile is in in the winemaking thing so for us uh, it, it was so great um to meet you like for because when when you try to export your wine abroad people always assume like you're a big company and they treat you like a big company and say oh you don't have organic certification right no we don't And so you were the first one we met that you understood what it was to be like a small producer and that it has a special and unique value. And you, and, and for us, it was, it's been so great to work with you because you see that and know that that is a good thing instead of a bad thing. For yeah. us, the fall is a good thing. Um, yeah. But most of the, like, of the business, um, this is a bad thing. Everyone wants to be big, very big. And we don't want to be that big. We just want to make best wines that we can and if that means being small we're small so exactly exactly because patience that's what makes good wine and now as everything is changing with you know the weather the harvest patience patience that's yeah. maybe <laughs> you know and and that's how you get good wines now by listening to nature and that's what you guys are doing so uh, I always We, our motto is to get not just any wine and not just any wine because it's vegan, but it has to taste good. The juice must taste good and all your yeah. wine tastes good. <laughs> um, uh, so, oh, I wanted to, before I forget, I wanted to just tell everyone that I was supposed to say this a long time ago, that with her, oh, wait, the two, um, the Syrah and the Malbec, for now, it's free shipping if you order it with winemaker promo code when you go to veganwines.com and you will see you will taste what we're talking about the beauty yeah. of your wine so i encourage you to go and get those wines because you will be very surprised that they're not the you know the typical traditional Syrah Malbec but in a fun way in a very good way it's a fun and a very easy to drink they're not like weird wines that but like funky taste or this is very Good wines, very fresh, uh, but like a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the code maker. I didn't hear you. Sorry. The code is wine maker. Wine maker. Wine maker. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to have it um, valid for the rest of the evening. And we're in the same time zone, you and I, so that's good. <laughs> um, and any um, last words you want to share with people? No, just thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for believing in us and bringing our great, great, we think, wines to the States. <laughs> um, everybody gets to uh, try it and love it as much as we do. Yes, and when we get to our new norm and we can start traveling again, yes. we, we'll definitely hold a wine tasting event. Um, we'll see how that holds up. But for now, <laughs> yes. taste your, you know, order your, um, your wines and taste it. And we're going to do another set of interviews later <laughs> on. And that way, hopefully, more people will have your wines in their hands. So as you're talking about and explaining to them, they're sipping away just like we are. <laughs> oh, they say, can you please repeat the promo? The code is WINEMAKER. Yes, WINEMAKER. Maker. All right. Well, thank you. Thank oh, you. wait. Um, let's do one together. Yes, we should. Um, so... There's a lot of things in hand that we can work around. So um, anyone that, you know, has any ideas, um, please info, email us at info at veganwines.com. We're always open to suggestions, collaborations, because that's what it's all about. We just want to make it fun with good wines. And yeah. with hardworking people behind them, as you can see, Loli and her family is all about. So yeah. thank you, Loli. Thank you, and, friends.
Thank you, and have a great weekend. I hope it doesn't get too chilly. No, it's and the, the weekend. So, so, yeah, it's good. Nice time. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, see you soon. Bye.